Hi friends, it's Monica and I'm going to be sharing what I read in May. So I did manage to read four books in May, which I'm really happy about and I hope to keep that amount of books read each month for the rest of the year. But let's get to my first book that I read and that was The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. And I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And this is my first Riley Seizure book and it did not disappoint. This book overall was a nice introduction to this author's writing. It was really easy to follow and you could pick up on clues and hints on what is the mystery's answer or resolution throughout the book. So with those little hints of foreshadowing, it did make it a little bit more predictable in a sense, but I was really shocked at some parts in this book. I did speed through this one and I read it in three days, which might not be as fast as some people could read books, but given that I was in a really bad reading slump, I'm really quite happy with that and I actually stayed up past midnight to finish this one. So we are following Casey who is a recent widow and she's also an actress but she is deciding to run away from the paparazzi because of her recent husband's death. Now she is spending time at her family lake house in Vermont. During Casey's autumn stay there, Usually there's not many people around in the lake area, but a famous couple, Tom and Catherine, has moved in across the lake from Casey's lake house and she gets a little bit curious about them. Tom is a tech innovator with millions and Catherine is a former supermodel and Casey, as I said, she gets a little bit curious and she decides to watch this couple with high-powered binoculars. One day, Casey actually saves Catherine from drowning in the lake and they form a friendship from then. However, Casey still continues to watch the couple, which is still kind of weird for me, and she watches how Tom and Catherine's marriage is a bit rocky. A few days later, Catherine disappears and Casey suspects it is Tom and that's where the mystery kicks off and we're kind of figuring out what has happened in Casey's own life and what has happened to Catherine. So with this book, it was a very quick read. There are many twists and turns that I really quite enjoyed, but I couldn't look past the true cause behind the mystery. And I don't want to say any more because it is a spoiler for the book, but I wasn't really happy about that. And I wished it was a more practical cause behind this disappearance of Catherine. The beginning half of this book did remind me of with a woman in the window with someone watching someone else out of their house. So it was a little bit kind of like a carbon copy of that. Casey herself is a bit outlandish with her obsessive behavior and actions, but I did I really like how Casey is resilient through all the things that she has been through and also with her final choice at the end of the book and I really admired her for that. There is a side character that threw me off of would be the obvious choice of being the suspect but in the end I did like how that storyline paired off. Overall, The House Across the Lake is a nice thriller with, with the lesson of watching people when you obviously should not be watching them but in this case if Casey hadn't been watching, more death would have followed. So I am really looking forward to reading more books from Riley Sager and I'm hoping to get to his backlist ASAP. The next book I read was Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. I had a lot of fun with this book and I was really meaning to read this series for quite some time and I'm happy that I picked up this first book. And it did remind me of a little bit of a good girl's guide to murder with the main character being a detective type of character. But Stevie, the protagonist in Truly Devious, is really unique to herself in her own world. This book is about a mystery that is set in Vermont at a private school, Ellingham Academy, and this school attracts the best and brightest. So there are two different mysteries that we're following. The first one is about the school's founder, Albert, whose wife and daughter are kidnapped and then subsequently are presumably murdered. And the second murder mystery in this book is in current day or present day in the book and that's again set at the academy. The unique thing that has to be noted would be where the title of the book comes from is truly dubious. With the early 20th century murders, there is a mysterious letter that's left behind listing different 
ways of committing murder and it's only signed by Julie Debrius. And at the center of trying to solve the cold case as well as the present day case is Stevie Bell, our protagonist. Stevie is socially awkward, she's a Sherlock Holmes type, she is quite intelligent and a true crime junkie. I did think Maureen Johnson did a really good job at representing how anxiety and social anxiety is portrayed in the character's monologue and how her behavior and actions come as a result of with overthinking and more things that align with anxiety and I just thought it was really well portrayed. But Stevie does come off as a bit nosy and uh, eavesdropping since she is still a teenager. Take on that mindset of the one who will be solving these mysteries. She does work towards of gaining the respect of the adults in this book and she does that successfully but some of the ways that she goes about even with people her own age some of her actions are not taken well in hand <laughs> however both mysteries are really easy to fall into and we do have the two separate timelines that are separated in the book so different chapters cover the two different timelines so we have the 1930s timeline and the present day timeline both of those had growing tension and people desperate for answers whether from an external source or from those directly affected by the murders there are highlights of what consequences of crime or murder can affect people which can include emotional trauma people getting hurt and stevie isolating herself from others and one other thing that i disliked about this book was the love interest for stevie he just overall came off as really standoffish and odd at first but the payoff with this love interest is great and i really like how that relationship evolved by the end of the book and i didn't like how the 1930s mystery is what I assume going to be the overarching mystery throughout the entire series and we were finally getting some clues about what had happened in the 1930s timeline in present day and figuring out what happened with this cold case by the end of this first book and then the book just ended and I'm like oh okay we're gonna be solving this mystery throughout the entire series but maybe it will be resolved in book two but let's see when I get to it. Overall this is a really strong first installment of this mystery series and I cannot wait to read more of it. So my next read was The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This is an adult romance and I rated this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars. First off I thought I would really like this book by Emily Henry as I did with Beach Read but unfortunately this one did not work for me. There are other tropes that I really do enjoy in romance books. Friends to lovers, slow burn romance, the one bed in an inn or a hotel, and opposites attract tropes and those were all included in this book but unfortunately the characters fell flat for me as well as their own chemistry was lackluster and a little bit boring to be honest. So we are following Poppy who is a blogger for a travel magazine and she travels around the world on the company's dime. But with her best friend Alex who she has spent several summers with on vacation, Poppy has not spoken to him in over two years. But on a whim, Poppy invites her best friend Alex onto a spontaneous trip in hopes of repairing their friendship. Poppy as the main character was decent, she's outgoing, chatty, energetic, and a little bit over the top. However, Alex was a boring love interest to me. He's the type of person who would stay at home, he's shy, he's reserved, and I thought there wasn't much substance to him. But in the case of this book, I think the author was going for the opposites attract trope. I think it was just way too much in your face and I think it just didn't contribute much to their chemistry or banter. There are two timelines in this book. First, we're following Poppy and Alex in present day who are going on their reunion vacation trip. And we also get flashbacks to all the past summer vacations that Poppy and Alex have gone on. With those flashbacks, I really enjoyed them more because of all the summer vacation destinations that they all went to and all the descriptions made me want to be on vacation. I did feel the flashbacks brought a lot of repetition between Alex and Poppy of jumping back and forth with will they, won't they finally admit that they have feelings with each other but Poppy and Alex at one point were both in committed relationships so they respected those boundaries of course. So it's not all bad. I really did like the dynamic between Poppy and Alex of their friendship, of how their basis of friendship grew into romance 
They respected each other, they pushed each other outside their comfort zone, and they bonded over having those summer vacations. In the end, they learned to get over their insecurities, learned that they have control over their own pathways to happiness, and gather their courage to actually admit their feelings for each other. I simply wanted more from Poppy and Alex overall as a couple. There was a lot of running around of not saying what you feel and not being honest with each other. And But I do think with this type of book, if they had said their feelings from the get-go, we wouldn't have such an extensive romance book. I just felt the build-up was a little bit lacking, so I was a little bit bored in some parts of the book. In the future, I still plan to read more books from Emily Henry, and I am eyeing her latest released book lovers, so I hope to get to that one soon. So the last book I read from May was The Sun Dam Montel by Simone St. James, and this is another mystery author I haven't read from before, and I did rate the book 4 out of 5 stars. So I didn't really appreciate the different tone that this book took on, aside from just mystery, there was the added tone of horror to it, Although I personally really dislike horror, I can understand why this particular book was really popular. This book is about two characters, and again, we're following two different timelines. First, we have Viv, who is a young woman who goes missing in 1982. And the second woman that we're following is Carly, who is actually Viv's niece. And Carly decides to go back to the hotel that Viv was working at to figure out more about her aunt's disappearance. I do like how there was a personal connection between Viv and Carly. It did bring about the concept of history repeating itself, since both of them do end up working as a night shift receptionist at the Sundown Motel. The mystery in Viv's point of view is about three unsolved murders of women who are in similar appearance to Viv herself. And Viv tries to figure out clues what has happened to these women and Carly is also following in her aunt's footsteps in the present day. I really liked how both Viv and Carly are strong women and they are not unreliable narrators so it was really nice to see them taking on that detective role and figuring out what has happened at this motel. And the setting of this book was perfect because it's set at a old rundown motel and at this motel, there are certain hauntings that we get to witness and it was really creepy reading those parts and we do have some friendly ghostly appearances that pop up in the book. There was a predictable twist in this book, but I did think the build up to it was really well done. The ending of Sundown Motel did remind me of a little bit of the house across the lake ending in regards to the main character's decision and other than that i was really surprised at the reveals that we got in this book also personally the creepy vibes were not it for me i highly dislike the horror genre especially horror movies and i think that does count with this book since with reading those paranormal encounters and such and especially when it's placed in like modern day and it's like a crime book i didn't like it <laughs> but overall this is a really nice thriller horror read those were all the books that i read in may and i really do hope to keep up my pace of reading more books although when i'm filming this video i have not yet finished a book in june but I'm working on that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all had a good day. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see y'all soon.